Good evening. Tonight we're going to uh, take a look at MyBenchJeweler.com and uh, we're going to look at our uh, air graver. And uh, <clears throat> we had some questions that were uh, brought up about it. Uh, one of these is for Paul. Uh, this is going to, we'll try and make these uh, quick so we don't go wasting a bunch of uh, people's time here. Uh, Paul uh, is a, a follower uh, on our YouTube as I am with uh, talking to him directly to email and uh, he uh, has been building uh, some air gravers and he's used a couple three different techniques and uh, he uh, reached out to me and wanted to know some uh, information on our graver and I'm happy to give it to him. Uh, the, he wants to know quite a few things, but first of all, what I wanted uh, to uh, get across here is that uh, one of the uh, so, uh, subscribers or people that uh, was watching us, he wanted to uh, suggest that we should put a uh, control valve on the compressor or on the, on the uh, filter. And this is uh, the filter we use. And it's got an air trap down here, our water trap down here. Sorry about that. And uh, so we're running right around uh, 35 pounds of, of pressure. And uh, then we've tweaked the, the graver with this valve here. And those are about 15 or 18 bucks for that valve. And I'd really like to find one that's just got the needle valve up on the top, just a little round needle valve. So with that being said, we'll, we'll look around and see one. The other change that we uh, have made when you buy the whole kit is that we're using these couplers here, these uh, pneumatic, uh, these are called I think uh, Utah pneumatic uh, uh, couplers and the tubes just go right into them and you can change or pull the tubes out and it makes it so much easier than uh, the way I was doing it. So we bought a bunch of those to, to put in the uh, system and uh, so far it's working real well. So that's a couple of the changes we've done. I'll fire the compressor. We're going to have to... Here we go. Aha, there they are. Alrighty. That's our uh, air gravers. Our pneumatic gravers. I guess we have to be very careful about how we state something. I've been in trouble more than once with that. So we're very careful. So we'll take a look at this. Now let's go back to Paul. Uh, Paul has been engineering his own gravers and uh, has been, <laughs> been having some success and some, some failures just like we did for over two years. And uh, without the help of uh, other people involved in uh, our business, I think we'd still be where he was. So uh, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of smirking there because I, I was lucky. I had uh, a gentleman that helped me out a lot, and uh, I appreciated it. So we'll try and return the trailer someday. But uh, he uh, he actually built this graver right here, and uh, sent it to me, and then we we copied it off uh, with a aluminum instead of all steel, uh, which doesn't matter. The the the, the chamber here is is. Down here, I'm sorry. The, the chamber is steel, so uh, fr from here to down is steel, and just the handle is aluminum, aluminium, I guess they call it. So, all right. So, Paul asked for uh, the status on our flip flop version graver, which we call it the. Uh, APG Graver. It's a, a full kit. is KF2520 on our website and uh, starts at about $695. Now uh, if you just want to buy the hand graver and put your own compressor on it, your own foot pedal, etc. Uh, you can buy the model F2520 and uh, be happy to sell you it that way too so it'll be quite a bit less in, in cost. Uh, let's go on with his. So he wanted to know, he said, the version graver, how well it works. How easy is it to start, which means he wants to know when you punch the, the compressor. So we've got this one set up. 
I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. I'm sorry you're going to have to listen up over the, there. But he wanted to know, because he was having problems, I believe, with his sticker. So I'm going to just hold on to the, the graver here. But now I'm running the control pedal down below. inside of here gets just up a little bit above the uh, cylinder you're going to get that and that happens with every every air graver I've seen work so you see I can, I'm not having any problems starting it when you go very very lightly on the pedal sometimes you can get it to hesitate as I can get it. We don't have much trouble with the graver stalling out. Now if I open this valve all the way up, this thing rocket screams, let me tell you. So, uh, just for the demo back here but I'm just controlling this with the foot pedal so as far as I'm concerned no it doesn't stall out and if it does it's it's not a, a, a critical situation it doesn't do it very often so the stall on these is is nominal and uh, so uh, let's see Air use, maximum and minimum pressure. Well, you can run this all up to about 50 pounds, and uh, we still don't have any problem with it uh, stalling out. Uh, I like it right about where I'm sitting right now. It's uh, 35 pounds, and then we adjusted it here. So Now, uh, I can't give you the exact maximum pressure, but right around 50 pounds. Yeah, see, then he asked, uh, Paul asked, uh, what is the machine machining time? <laughs> uh, that depends whether you bust a bit or not. <laughs> or miss drill of the, uh, the housing or, or a million and other things. But uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to you know, if, if you, depending on what kind of uh, uh, lathe and, 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 and so forth, on my equipment, uh, I would say that we would have, let's see, so I'm just, you know, 15 to 25, I, I'm going to change that, but I, I'm not sure exactly how many hours we have in them, but uh, I can tell you what it takes to uh, set everything up, it takes about 10 hours, uh, and by the time you get everything set, tested, boxed, and ready to ship, you've got, you've got some hours in it, so... Uh, and the girls do a, do a fantastic job, Shayla and Crystal, so my hats are off to them. So that would be 
my estimate, 15 hours, 15 to 25 hours. Uh, let's see what else did he wanted here. Um, the cost of the flip flop valve, difficulty of drilling the two holes. All right, so everybody wants to know how these work. So we'll let's see if I can. It, it's it's a uh, hammer chisel. Why can't I get this in here? Let's, let's back this out just a little bit. All right, uh, it's hammer chisel technology. Put it back uh, 1890s all the way up. So here is your. Uh, top piece. Nothing fancy about it. Uh, right there. It's uh, well, This one's well built and then it has inlay in it. Uh, that was just some uh, show off. <laughs> That's what he told me. <laughs> so I just I just enjoy all of my uh, viewers that we have. Uh, they're, they're so comical most of them and uh, a lot of them are just fun to to answer the questions to. Uh, as you well know, we, uh, we build clock oil kits, we build jewelry quick kits. Uh, this is the bell body right here. And uh, this is uh, built to uh, last. So, and you open this up, piston comes out, and we only have one weight of a piston, so that's it. And we do not use oil inside of here, and this is just being regular steel, and we've had no problem with it as long as you have a water trap on your uh, uh, filter, which we do. So I think it pretty well helps keep that out of there. Now there's a, a reed valve, and you see I've got that mark so I can put it back together, but there's a reed valve inside of here. And uh, there's there's quite a lot of, uh, oops, don't lose my little fellow there. Okay, so there's your bo valve body. And see, he wanted to know the difficulty of drilling holes. Well, there's a lot of difficulty. You better have some coolant when you drill it. Uh, he's referring to uh, this hole right here and this hole right here. And this one goes all the way down and uh, is inside of here. And uh, the air comes down through there and pushes that ball back up. The reed valve kicks in and uh, stops it and then it forces the air back down through the top and there's several little valve ex uh, gas air exchanges here. Now you can take a look. This is the valve. The little reed or the little 50 thousandths valve inside of that. And then it's set up to uh, operate uh, through these uh, gas releases. So that's how that works. So we'll put that back together. Yeah, see, we'll lose that little piston and that's the last thing we want to do. So do you want to uh, put oil or DW40 down these? No. Leave them dry. I don't think there's you know, we're not having any problems with them, so why, why change the problem? So, that, yeah, that takes care of that. Let's see. The Medicare hammer from Harbor Freight uses a very thick, heavy barrel, piston and bit return spring. It will work on 20 pounds and up with air pressure. I like 35 pounds, so. I think that should answer most of your stuff, Paul. Uh, I really don't uh, have any more information I can actually, I can't give you the uh, exact airflow and, and uh, how much, I'm just telling you I use a very tiny air compressor and it works for what we're trying to do. So, but uh, by the time you machine one of these, I, I guarantee you the, the money that uh, it costs uh, is well worth it to, to, to buy these just pre-made like this. Then we also make these tips. It's, this one comes straight out. And uh, I can sell you any, any quantity that you want. So, And uh, the gravers that we use, 
uh, you can buy carbide and we can make you a carbide. But carbide, you have to remember a couple things about carbide is one, uh, you really got to use a, a, a mask that, uh, or ventilation, extreme ventilation. Uh, carbide is uh, carcinogenic and uh, can, can cause cancer. So I don't really like using carbide. A lot of people love it though. Uh, we use uh, high speed steel, three millimeter round. Uh, so you can buy your own uh, uh, blades if you want, or your own stock. We, we sell it in uh, two, about two, two and a, well, it's not quite two and a half, about 2.40 inches. And it's uh, adjustable in, in your uh, tool holder. So it makes it pretty nice. Now, these are uh, template sharpened, and this one here is set up at 90 degrees. Now, I was talking to Sean, and he's from uh, Britain, and uh, I think Sean uses a 120 and a 96. Don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, I don't have a 96-degree uh, uh, template, so I used a 90, which is what I have. And I think it works all right. I do not, uh, I am not a hand engraver or a, a machine engraver. Uh, we do a lot of uh, bright cutting and uh, regal cutting on jewelry, and that's where we're at with that. So uh, I use push gravers, and we build push gravers. You can find those on our website. So what I will do is I will link everything uh, from our website on uh, our YouTube channel so you can go and take a look at everything that's there. So it is Christmas. Uh, I don't know that we can get one of the, we can get these shipped in a day's time, but the thing I, I think we're going to run into is uh, delivery time. Uh, we do insure them, uh, and it's right around twenty dollars to ship them with insurance. Uh, we give you fifteen day return if you don't like it, you don't own it, and we'll refund your money in full, less the shipping. You have to, well, I'm, I, I take that back. Uh, less the shipping, uh, we do get, you get the sales tax back too. So if you ship it back to us, you are responsible for insurance and shipping. That's what I was trying to get at. So uh, I've never had one shipped back yet, and we've sold a number of them. But you know, you're always waiting for the day but somebody didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, that happens. You know what? Can't win them all. So, here's what. About $695 right now on the website if you went right up to my bench jeweler and looked at it. I haven't had time to change it. But through Christmas here, and I think into the middle of January, we are going to drop the price on these because I'd like to get a few more out there with people who know how to engrave so that we can... Uh, have some uh, feedback on this. It's really difficult when you, when everybody we sold is brand new at it, and they don't you know they don't have the uh, the uh, technology or the the the, late, uh, the learning experience. And I'm not an engraver. I'm a I'm a jeweler that uh, does bright cutting and uh, jewelry setting, stone setting, uh, and uh, designing jewelry. So that was uh, you know 30 years of our business. And during that 30 years, we uh, did clockwork, watch work, pocket watch work. We did uh, uh, extensive uh, jewelry design and custom uh, jewelry making. And uh, we also taught it over the years. So uh, in our student classes, we have uh, room for six people. Uh, right now, COVID has just killed the uh, classroom. Uh, nobody's, uh, everybody's really scared of it right now. Uh, I have never been sick with it, but uh, I have been down for three weeks here, so that's why you're not getting any videos. Uh, I had to get a little surgery done. Uh, it's called old age fix me uppers. <laughs> uh, uh, don't I'm not going to get into details because it's not important. But it was not serious situations. Uh, some polyps in my, you know what, and it had to be fixed. <laughs> but, but the recovery time is a little bit longer than what. For, for an old man. <laughs> uh, I should have, this is more than you guys want to know. <laughs> so, 
Anyway, uh, we'll get back to this. I'm going to sell these, uh, uh, the whole unit, uh, KF2520. I'm going to sell it for $495 plus shipping, which is about $20. It might be a little less if we can ship them in a $15 minimum box. And then uh, $37.17 or a $37.10, so I'll round it off to $37. So uh, that's the sales tax. I can't get you out of the sales tax. So we're looking at uh, shipped to you 532. So that's uh, that's as least expensive as I can get it, considering the very cost that uh, these actually run. So there you have it, fellas. <laughs> and Paul, I hope that answered all your questions. Let me go back through this once more, and I I'm trying not to continually talk, but. It says, please give me the status of your flip-flop version engraver, how well it works. How easy is it to start? Well, we went through that. It's real easy to start. We don't have very much uh, hesitation there. Uh, air use maximum. I can, the maximum is, is uh, about 50. We set it at 35 pounds, and it'll run way less than that. So we can probably run it at 15 pounds. And I think that's probably about where we're at when we uh, with the uh, valve control on it, on the uh, regulator. So the air regulator with the uh, water trap. So be sure that you use that uh, that style of uh, filter, whether you buy ours or not. Uh, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to buy. But make sure there's a, a water trap on the bottom of them. Uh, so flip-flop valve difficulty of drilling the holes in the barrel. Uh, that difficulty on a one one to ten scale is going to be about seven. You just got to take your time. You got to be able to peck drill. Uh, I have a CNC mill which can do it. But uh, anyway, he was having problems with his hammer uh, uh, valve working properly, so he moved to a uh, kind of a barbell engraver, and uh, it's quite neat. I'm not going to get into it because it's his, not mine. So, Paul, I hope this uh, answers all your questions that you were asking on this. And I'm sorry it took me three weeks to get back to you. But, uh, you know, when you're down and out, you're out. <laughs> so, people, I will list all this stuff on the, uh, on the website. And uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I got you up here. Let's see if we can get over here. And uh, I don't know how well this is going to work. So... All right. Be nice if I could figure it out. Okay. Now I just use a little drawer right here, <laughs> and this is just a ball graver. Now I took this piece of copper and took it in there, and I, I glued it with uh, super glue onto a piece of uh, brass plate because this is just not strong enough. Uh, it wants to bend when I try to clamp it. So that was my way of doing it. Uh, I made one cut right here. You can see it. I'll try and make another cut so you can get it out a better idea how well the graver does work. Uh, please bear in mind I am not an engraver so I'm a I'm a jeweler push graver. <laughs> but I'm learning how to use this and I'm having a little bit of fun with it. So I don't know if you can see this very well, I'm going to try and not let's see if I can get my hands out of there. I think I can. So, all right, noise. Okay, quick feed. Gotta let that build up pressure just a little bit. Like I said, uh, I would recommend a, a much larger compressor than what we're using. We're using one of these, just a single stage, little bitty, oh, it's probably a, a Menard $50 compressor. It works. You can notice that this doesn't hesitate very often. So now, let's go in here.
that pressure up a little bit. demonstration Paul and uh, two out there to everybody so uh, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this little uh, video it's, it got a little longer than I wanted it to but it uh, takes a lot of time to explain all the individual things that you're trying to do with it so once again uh, thank you for watching uh, our website is mybenchjeweler.com and uh, I'll put that in the links down below so that you can get to it and uh, the oil kits that we make we also make uh, a, a dapping block like this fella right here uh, see if we can get that in I don't know. let's uh, bring that out these here fellas now these are uh, absolute must if you're going to use push gravers now if Sadly, the, the situation is is that I never have any tools because I'm always selling them to somebody else. And, and by the time I get them made again for me, that somebody else wants one. So, but uh, these are uh, these are really unique. So, but uh, what they're designed to do is uh, this is a shellac, and you heat your your piece of metal like this, and you just put it on there. And uh, let's see if we can get out a little further. So uh, it allows you to use your gravers, in, including bright cutting gravers like this one here. And uh, it, it, it kind of will, will give you a demonstration of how well this little fellow works. And uh, this one, uh, the, we lock tight these in so they don't come loose. But uh, I'm beginning to wonder whether we should. Uh, make a bigger one that, that can tie into these but for right now this works for about 95 percent of all the jewelry little trinkets that you make that you want a regal cut or bright cut so that's uh probably enough for tonight uh hope everybody's having a, a great december uh we're certainly having it so uh we'll uh catch you on the uh downstream so Thanks for watching, and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, any feedbacks that are that are uh, reasonably, you know. Uh, I, d I don't want people putting a bunch of trash out there because I'll take you off. But uh, otherwise, all your comments are welcomed, and we try to answer them as fast as we can. So the girls are really good about uh, sorting through the emails and then uh, getting back with me, and we uh, will go ahead and get it back on either an email or we'll send it back to you. So usually we do it those ways. So thanks for watching.